Hey, everybody. Well, I have a great guest today, and I am so glad to be able to do this. I have known Cynthia Wachos for so many years, and it's so great to reconnect. She is killing it as Nina on General Hospital, and her performances have, have always been astounding, and they continue to be, and she is right in the middle of the Red Hot storyline on daytime TV right now. Cynthia, it's so good to see you. No, it's so good to see you, Michael. I'm just, you know how much I love you. So thank you for you having too. me. Great. And I know you just had a full day of work. So yeah, you're okay. in yep. the resting room and yeah. Welcome. <laughs> so, yeah. so first of all, we have seen major moments happen in the Nina, Sunny, Carly storyline that literally blew up. And we've seen, you know, she were, we've seen she's got into bed with Sunny. Nina made her way in. You know, it's so interesting. They always put you in these situations where, you know, you're trying not to be a bad girl, but, you know, to play the complexities of the character, but she doesn't do nice things all the time. So how do you like make peace with it and do it? And it's, yeah. a, it's a lot, right? To well, like, Michael, it's like being human, right? It'd right. be nice if we were human beings who never made mistakes and always did the right thing and, and never, you know, um, so a lot of what Nina does, I mean, consider her childhood too, what she had to go through in her life. And so there's a lot of just um, uh, uh, her development because she was in a coma for so long has been stilted. Um, so I think that that adds to it, not to make excuses for the <laughs> things that she does, um, but I, I love Nina. I think she she's very, she's not evil. She's not trying, um, to purposely go out there and hurt people. She's just like all of us, we're trying to find love. We're, we're, we're trying to um, not be so fearful in our life. She has a lot of hurt, a lot of pain. Um, she might try to cover that pain with things that she probably needs to go to therapy actually, but. <laughs> Um, but she she finds a lot of comfort in in Mike slash Sunny. So um, I see her as someone really desperately trying to find love, and she's had some bad relationships in the past, and and we'll see if this is the one that will save her, that little piece of her, that little girl that's just wanting to be loved. You know, she's very strong too. I mean, she runs a magazine. She, she, listen, if you push her too, too far, she, she's not, so don't mistake her kindness for weakness. I think that she's a very strong, um, strong-willed woman who can definitely survive on her own if she had to, but she, she does desperately want love and desperately wants a child. Um, she doesn't think she'd be able to get the child, so she's trying to find the man. Which, right, and there's there's two things to that. Of course, now everybody's back on with the hints that are happening that Willow may be her daughter because mm. we've got birth certificate issues and all sorts of things. And originally they had Willow and Nina at each other's throats. Originally they were not friendly in any yeah. respect whatsoever. So originally it was like, well, this is gonna turn out to be the daughter. And then we had Chloe Lanier, then we had Nell. And yeah. so everybody's guessing, which is, which is great for you because it keeps another angle of the storyline bubbling. I love the bubbling. Yes. <laughs> if you're an actor on this on a soap, you want the bubbling. I think it's it's fun to play all that complexities and stuff like that. And um you would feel if Willow is her daughter. How, how would Nina feel if Willow's yeah. her daughter? I don't uh I'm not sure how that's all gonna play out. Um if that was a scenario that would actually play out i think there's such a deep wanting to have a child i mean she's grasping onto her grandchild um wiley that um anybody who would be her daughter whether it be willow or anyone if that's possible out there in the world she would fall over herself with like happiness and love and um yeah, it's like the best gift you could give her. Right. So we shall see what happens with that. With we Maurice, shall see. With, yes, with you and Maurice, you know, the scene where, you know, he's having a manic episode and she's talking him down off a ledge and, you know, he's 
gets a little rough with her and all of those scenes with Maurice. How are those to play? And I, did you ever think when you came to General Hospital, this is where it was going to go? Like, uh, or did you have any idea? No, like when I came on GH, I didn't know what I was going to, what was in store for Nina. Uh, I watched Michelle um, and her shenanigans and um, I loved what she was doing with it and stuff like that. And I loved the Nina character. So I really loved Nina right from the get go. And when I got in on it, you know, with Valentine and all, all the stuff and it just kind of, so no, I never thought that this was going to be the, um, the result of, I think I'm coming in on two and a half years now playing Nina, almost three. So yeah, and I love it. I, I have to say I'm in love with my storyline. I love Maurice. I love Laura. I love playing. Um, I love playing the storyline. I know there's a lot of people out there that have big feelings about this. Big feelings going on. And you guys are getting at every angle, right? The good and the bad, right? Because mm -hmm. people, and sometimes it's great when there is a reaction, then no reaction at all, as long as it doesn't attack the actors personally, right? Mm -hmm. So as long as there's a great reaction, it's hitting a nerve, right? So. Right. Right, they're watching, you know, and um, so yeah, I think you're you're exactly right. It's hitting a nerve. Mm -hmm. So when you did those scenes with Maurice and he does the manic episode and she realizes, oh, he's having an episode, and that's something that they share together right now. You know, Carly doesn't know doesn't know about that where we're at in the story right now. So Nina has it. Do you think that's one of the reasons? In her in her mind, do you think that gives her a one up, or is it a, a special moment that she feels? she had with him that she got close to him that way or experienced that with him? I definitely don't think she thinks of it as a one-up. I think she, she, she fully cares for him and it's not being manipulative or any of that. I think she, she's worried about him in that moment. And I think it is something, you know, when you share something like that or something that's really huge in someone's life and you try to help them out, you do come together. I mean, it, it, you do get closer to that person. And there's, you know, she knew Mike in Nixon Falls. I think this is her getting to know Sonny. And I know, I know Nina looks sometimes like she wouldn't be able to handle like the, the big personality that Sonny has. And that part of that big personality is his um, being bipolar and having these manic episodes. And I think, I think Nina is stronger than, than, than some people give her credit for. I think she can handle a lot. So um, I wouldn't worry about her too much dealing with the, the mob boss, Sunny. Yeah. yeah. I, so talk to me about what it was like doing the scene where Carly walks in on them in bed in the yacht. Were you guys laughing or did you guys like, how did you do the scene? Cause she comes in and you're like, oh, yeah. Well, you know, well, Michael, you know, when you do love scenes, it's very mechanical. It's right. not like, oh, you yeah. know, <laughs> so the wardrobe people, you have your clothes on and they have to, so you look like you're underneath the sheet, but you wrap a sheet around you and then make it. So there's a lot going on um, to make it look like it's an effortless love scene. So once we get that all, and, and Laura had scenes before that. So she, when we were getting down and to where she was coming in, she came in out of her dressing room and then went on to the stage and we're like, hey, you know, and she, uh, she was like, hi guys. <laughs> and then goes by the door and has to do it when she's walking through the, the hallway. Oh. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, we did it like two takes. Um, I think one take, something was showing. So we had to cut and they had to like, smush it whatever was my clothes that was showing smush it down and then we did it again and yeah it's very it's not romantic at all it's no. not like yeah it's it's by the numbers you know but because it's a very soapy thing like the woman walking in on the other the, the, you know and there's a da da moment right that's a very soap yeah. opera thing it's that moment where I'm like you know you guys have to hold your looks like you have to hold the tag it's holding yeah. the tag <laughs> And I always love when I see you guys holding the tag. And I'm wondering, yeah. like, what are they thinking right now? <laughs> it's like, yeah, you're so right. Like, it's like, boom, boom. She opens the door and they were like. 
And then literally you're like that for, because you know, they cut, like they edit this stuff, but you're like, like hold it, hold it, hold it. <laughs> <laughs> so you're so right. And then we do, I think we did chuckle afterwards. We're like, oh. um, but yeah, it's, it's funny. And then we had to get dressed, like make it look like we we're getting dressed afterwards and stuff like that. And then they had a big, um, big fight and I wasn't part of that. So Laura and you are playing just these arch rival nemesis. I mean, they, it's, 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 you know, I guess if we're going to bring a nemesis in, it's going to be Cynthia Watros. I mean, you know, you had such success with Kim Zimmer on Guiding Light for, for that whole run. It was like, that was what you tuned into every day was Annie and Reba, Annie and Reba, and what they're going to do. And that whole thing. And now you're, it's kind of like Carly and Nina in a different, whole different dynamic. Yeah. Uh, but it's interesting to me that you're that person that has come like steamrolled into these major <laughs> couples with your character. You play. Yeah, I know. Look at me. That must say something about who I am. <laughs> What's going like, on? Many of watchers can play that part. She does. <laughs> She she wrecks marriages really well. Marriage wrecker. Did yeah, you she, your favorite scene with Laura so far? Is there one that you guys just thought was the best? Had well, someone when, doing? When we were in the gravesite and I was like, uh, I just found out about Nell and that. In, in Nina's mind, she thinks that Carly could have saved Nell. Right. And, um, and I don't know if she'll ever not think that. So there's a lot of anger and resentment for that. You could have saved my daughter. I don't think she thinks that she killed her, but I do think that she thinks you could have saved her. So that's like killing, right? Um, and so when she found out about that and then she was in the uh, Sunny, um, ironically enough, his grave site. And then I came in and Jax was there and I was just like, you, you killed her. And something, I don't know the words exactly, but you, you know, I hate you. And she was like, I hate you. And we, we did a bunch of um, oh, right. back and forth. And then I went and Jax was like, oh, wait, what about me? And I was like, you just, you're a liar like the rest of them. You just do it with a tan and a smile. And I just <laughs> like walk out. But that's Very Betty Davis, you just do it with a tan a and a smile. And, you know, Maurice seems to be really enjoying working with you. He's been very complimentary, you know, to you publicly. Um, you know, what can you say about then working with him in this way? Because he's very excited, apparently, you know, obviously from his statements that, you know, it's a new relationship. It's a, it's a new challenge, you know, when you're playing the same coupling over and over again. And, you know, and you know that all great love stories have to bust up to come back together too, wow. if that's what was to happen. Right. So, yeah. yeah. Well, I love, uh, and I'm not just saying because I'm talking to you and all you <laughs> people out there. Um, he, he, I love working with him. It, he, it's, it's just, it's, it's spontaneous. It's organic, and that sounds kind of like, what do you mean organic? It's just, it, it breathes. The scene breathes. I don't know what's really going to happen. I kind of get, I kind of know what we're going to say, right? right? But um, it when when they say action, it, it like the the feel of it changes and. And if we had to do the scene again, it would it would be different again. He's he's a very um, authentic, real actor, and to be able to play um, with someone like that makes just you a better actor. Um, so I really, really, I, I and he's a really interesting guy, and I just I really like him a lot. So I feel very fortunate. It's been interesting. They have scenes with you, like they had one with you and Mara West, Ava, like aren't you going to go like, and then this one and Obrecht, they're like, why aren't you going to go after him? Well, go after him, go after it. Like they're all prodding her on, you know, she's trying to say, no, I don't want to do it that way. I kind of want to, and they're like, just go after it. Just go after what she wants. So, but she really wants to just go after it. Right. Cause she loves him. Oh, she does. She loves him. And whatever happens, I think she will always love him. Like, have, have you ever loved someone and you're like, I just want the best for you. And if it's with me, great. If it's not with me, well, it sucks for me, but I just love you. It's kind of like that. And um, she doesn't want to be a homewrecker. I, it's one of those human things again. Yes, she slept with him. Um, but she, it was just like this passion that just kept building and building and building and just kind of, it came out of such care and love and just, oh, I just, 
I just want to feel like what it's like to just kiss you. And then it went, you know, um, a little bit too far. Too far. And um, but so if they if they ended up together, I think I she doesn't want to wreck anything. And yeah, Ava and um, um, Dr. Uh, Obrecht, they're, they're kind of pushing her, but she's, she's questioning if that is, she's questioning herself whether that is the right thing to do. It might not be the right thing to do. So, she but she can't, she can't seem to stay away from him. She's always like showing up. She, she seems to be everywhere he is. It's just so. <laughs> she, just show, she shows up. She shows yeah. up. She, but does she feel guilty at all now for what she did to Carly back in Nixon Falls? Does she have guilt about any of that? Man, she couldn't say I'm sorry enough. Yes, she does have <laughs> guilt. And I want to remind everyone how many times I've said sorry about that. Like a hundred times. <laughs> I'm really, really sorry. <laughs> sorry. Um, it's no excuse, but I can't, I can't change what happened. I can only go on and try to be the best person. I'm trying my best um, to be the best person I can be. And I will make mistakes and I will fail and I'll not fail, but I'll probably make a ton more mistakes and then I'll try to make it right. But, you know, it's, it's very human. Has there been anything that you've been completely thrown by script wise that you've gotten in this story arc that you're like, wait a minute, now wait. This has happened. I mean, or does it all seem like the trajectory makes sense to you for how the character is going? Uh, I yeah, I love the writers. It's also interesting in how um, they they kind of interweave the storylines and and then throwing in the drinking and throwing in the bipolar and not taking the meds and how she's dealing with all that and kind of absorbing that he's not really Mike. But he, but he is Mike, but he's Sonny and, and her trying to wrap her brain around all that. And then Carly comes in and, and so I'm not surprised by it. I'm just in awe of how it all sort of is so interesting. It's so interesting to me, this, this um, trio and, and all the different levels to it. So and everybody's gotten to do amazing work. I mean, they've given each one of you like oh scenes, like really anchored great scenes to play each of you. Yeah. And, you know what I mean? It's really yeah. been- I agree with that. Yeah. So 1998, you win the daytime Emmy. I told you about my favorite thing in the princess dress, in the beautiful yeah. dress. You know, you were up against Eileen Davidson and Susan Lucci and Jackie Zeman and Kim Zimmer. And it was your, wasn't that your first nomination or was it your, yeah. 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 And there you were. <laughs> and there I was. And no one else, Michael, was more surprised than me. I mean. Which shocks I, me. Yeah, I did not. I, I, I knew it from doing, because I, I knew it because I was producing all the clip packages for the Emmys, like, and the nominees are, and they go to the individual clips of the actors. So I did all those packages. Yeah, no, I thought so. I thought so. I had you to win. I didn't have, I don't, didn't know that, oh. but I, I had you to win. So what do you remember? Yeah, I, we yeah. talked about this before, but what do you remember about that night? I think I told you, I wish I didn't cry so much. Right. I'm a crier. <laughs> Like I, I am just a cry. Like I could cry, like just if you told me a story of, you know, of a hard time you were having, I don't know. Um, so I just wish I, I didn't cry so much and I didn't thank anyone. I think I thanked like my second grade teacher and I, that was it. I don't even remember like who I thanked. And I remember people were mad at me, like, thanks a lot. <laughs> you didn't even <laughs> You didn't even mention me and I've been living with you for 20 years. Um, uh, I, I think, yeah, I wish I could have done that over, but you know, you do the best you can. Do you think Kim Zimmer was your ultimate scene partner in, in soaps? Like, uh, was she like the person that, you know, you had so much with her? I mean, was that the, how was that? I know looking back on it now is probably different than when you're in it. Right, because we look back on things differently than when we're. Excited. Well, I 
it was really my first, I mean, technically not my first, but really my first job was that, was that soap. And so to, to work with someone like Kim, so I would just be so prepared and at seven o'clock in the morning, I'd be screaming at her like we were rehearsing. So I, as Annie, I'd be screaming at her going, ah, and I remember she's like, you know, you don't have to act so early in the morning. <laughs> I'm like, oh, sorry. Um, so she, so she taught me a lot about what it was like to just be an actor with a company of people. And she was so gracious, Michael, because I did so much to her. And when I say I did so much, <laughs> to her, I, I would get a script like, and it would just be like, yeah. and he says these lines, but I would add in stuff and I would be like in her face and I would be like, yeah, and I would like, I don't know. Like, and she let me do that stuff. I mean, she could have, she was a superstar. Like she still is in my mind, a superstar. And she could have been like, can you, stop spitting I, at me. <laughs> can you stop that? Because that's annoying. Um, but she let me do, and I will forever be so grateful to her for just, um, just letting me do my stuff. And we had, I had so much fun with her and it, it was probably the hardest time too, to, to really love someone and just always be like, oh, you know, um, but she, so she's great. Yeah. And it's so nice. Robert Newman's now back on daytime. You're old. Oh, and I know. I know you're fond of Robert too, from playing, you know, Josh and Annie all those years. Yeah. I'm so happy for him. I saw a couple of clips. He looks so good and he's doing such already such an amazing job. You know, lost Titus finding Carter. I, I love finding Carter. I did too. And I know yeah. it's short lived, but like of all those roles, what was it? What's the one that you are most proud of? Um, I'm proud of all of them in, in different, in different ways. You know, when I got lost, I didn't really know. I didn't watch the show. So I didn't really know how big of a show, big of a deal it was. I kind I kind my agent was like over the moon when I got it. I was like, wow, you seem very excited. <laughs> um, like, what is it? Yeah, it's funny. And then I had to move to Hawaii, which was great. Um, I think I've, I fall in love with every single character and I fall in love with their world and, and I feel so grateful. Like you said before, Michael, you know, to be able to love what you do for a living and especially in this business, it's so difficult. It's changed so much. Like it's, it's, it's a completely different business than when I started, what, 20 years ago. Um, so I just feel grateful that I get to play these characters. And so I don't have, there was one job that I had to quit. And, um, and it was, it was a, a, a theater job. And the director just did not like me for some reason. I don't know why, just hated me. Like the first day I was like, hi, I'm Cynthia. You know, I'm, hi, I'm Cynthia, I'm hate you. excited. Ah! And he's like, we'll see. And I was like, oh, and every day it was just like, oh, you suck. You know, and I was like, I'm sorry. Oh. I'm just, oh, no. and um, I called my agent because I'm not a quitter. Like, but I was like debating whether or not to throw myself in traffic or <laughs> go back to this theater and do this. Oh, God. And when you have those options, I called my agent. I was just like, you know, I can't. And she goes, then quit. People qu quit jobs just quit. They'll find someone else. Believe me, they'll find something, someone he wants and everything will be glad and he'll be happy. And, and so that was the only job, but all the others I loved. Do you know what makes you, what, why do you think you're so good as an actress? What is, what do you know? What do you think it is that we all relate to? What is it that you're bringing to the table that we all go, she is so good. Like, what is it? Like, do you know, do you know what that you have to have the confidence. Well, you have to have the confidence to be in this business, which you, you know, it's a very hard business mm -hmm. and you have to love it enough, right. To even put yourself oh. through the ups and downs of it, to be able to act, right. right. To entertain. Yes. yes. So do you get, you, have, that, you know what I mean? You have to love it so much that that love pierces all the nose, all the negativity, all the, you're fat, you're too this, you're too that, you're, that love for acting, 
or whatever you do that you love has to pierce through all that so you get to do so you get to do it yeah now what's happening with the twins how are your girls uh, they're 20 now almost 21 oh, that possible? yeah they were three when i, I know it blows my mind they're in college they're finally um they got their booster because both of their colleges um they need their booster so they got their booster and then they're actually going to go to their in their third year go into class which i'm so excited about because they've really kind of missed out on the campus university yeah. Yeah. life um and now it's interesting, Michael, is they say that they have anxiety about going back to class, which I totally get, but it's more that it's not a, it's not, it's less about COVID now and more about they're just not used to going to school. They're used to it being like we yeah, are. Like this. Yeah. So, yeah. so I find that interesting that their brains now have to revert back to how it was before, you know? Um, I don't know if we'll ever get back to the way it was before. And of course they have to wear masks and they have to six feet, um, distance themselves six feet, but the, their brains have to get reprogrammed to, well, this is college, you know, this is, and I guess we all in a way have to somehow find that somehow it's weird now, isn't it? It's so weird. Like <laughs> it's just a different yeah. It's going to be interesting to see what remains when this is not a pandemic, but is endemic and we're living with this in the way we just have to, what will remain and what will go back to how it was, or maybe nothing will, you know what I mean? What will, yeah. what will all the events be? What will, you know, what will Zooms be? What will, will we be back on set seeing you guys? I mean, I, like I said, I hadn't seen you since the one time I saw you at the Emmys, right? I've yeah. It's the first time I saw anybody in two and a half years. I am so used to sitting down with people and doing that but this is thank god we had this right which is yeah. now a new norm yeah to, to do it do the girls watch you on general hospital they barely know i'm an actor like i always know i mean they know i'm just kidding but i always tease like i'm from michigan and i always tease my mom i go you know i'm an actor right because they could care a lot like they were just like i don't just into their thing yeah care. you know just grab, go to the grocery store, grab me some sushi. Um, so, so no, they, they don't, I, maybe I shouldn't be telling people, but no, they don't. My mom, my mom tried to watch a couple of things that I've been in and she's just like, no, you're really good. But it's just, I like mash. She likes mash. And she, I, I don't love, love that you're like you want you want the people that you know in your family like oh I did I I I'm doing like okay yeah yeah, yeah I'm good I did do one Nutri-Grain commercial like a long time ago and that was just a fluke that I actually that was exciting because I suck at I suck at commercials and my mom was like oh I saw that Nutri-Grain commercial that you were in you're like a star and I'm like that's what that's what did it. That's what that's that what your grain commercial. <laughs> me. Thanks. Oh my Thanks. God. Oh my God. So what do you want to see happen for Nina? What in your mind do you what do you hope is on the horizon here? <sighs> that's such a good question and so difficult to answer. Okay. Um well I feel for her. Um because she has a lot of pain, it'd be nice to feel as though some of those big holes of pain get filled up a little bit. And maybe she finds that by finding strength within herself. We all say yes to that because, you know, you got to be happy with yourself. So maybe she does that or find love or who knows? I don't know. Maybe one I day she'll I just wonder if she's going to continue to manipulate Carly out of Sonny's life. I don't think she manipulates anything. Okay. And she, she, <laughs> and she just has a different word for manipulation. Oh, I just happened. I think, I don't, th see, I, we have a difference of opinion. Okay. I, she just, I think she, okay, she got carried away in Nixon Falls, right? And she got right. carried away in this fantasy world. Right. And then she goes back to Port Charles 
and she's like hitting the head with like this the reality of it all I I feel and the writers might call me and go no that's not why we wrote that but I feel like she just got carried away and she didn't really yeah she's mad at Carly um and she, yeah she's she, Carly's not she didn't, think best that far. she didn't think that far ahead is what you're no. saying right yeah I mean haven't you ever fallen in love with someone that you weren't supposed to fall in love with mm. we'll mm. talk later talk later that's it mm-hmm yeah, exactly. Sure. Yep. Right. Or had a crush on someone that you you're not supposed to have, you're not, who's not available to you, right? Or, and you're like, I, what, what like, are you what doing? Am I, what am I doing? What yeah. Am I, doing? I can't do that. Yeah. Unattainable. Sometimes people Unattainable. are more driven to the ones that they can't have so easy. There's a, mm -hmm. there's a psychology to that, right? Oh, very interesting, Michael. We need to talk later. Talk later. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll, I'm going to wrap this up with you, but I, I want to know. So in this whole time, have you had, when you left the set, and because you've been so great, has there been a scene where you're like, nailed it, that was great. I, I'm so proud of that scene. Any recent stuff that you shot that we saw? Or you're not like that? I'm not like that. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I am so critical of my work. I can't even really watch. Like if I'm watching my stuff, I watch it like this, like, okay like a filter like you have to put like an afghan over me so i can just <laughs> see like just a little tiny bit of me um uh no i i i don't i don't believe there was one time i have to say there was one time on guiding light that i felt i felt and and i don't know if you've ever maybe we talked i don't know that I actually, this is gonna sound really weird to brace yourself, that I actually became like became Annie and um and I feel it's hard to describe. Um there was one time that when they said uh cut, I've I felt like I didn't quite know what I did. Right. You were kind of you were in that world of her. Yeah. And I'm, person. yeah, but and you not, are. Isn't that what you want as an actor? Is that the ultimate goal to just become that character or? Yeah, you want to become that character, but if you became fully that character, <laughs> you'd be psychotic because you'd be like, I don't know who I am. And there's a lot of method actors who do that. And I, I apply, but most of the times you, you do your lines and then you're like Cynthia again, right? Um, and then you do your lines as Nina and then you're Cynthia again. Right. Um, also in Lost, when I die, oh, if people haven't watched Lost, um, there you know, was Libby, how, yeah. Well, Libby died. And during the death scene, it was a long, long death scene. And she got, um, I'm just totally spoiling it if you guys haven't watched Lost. She got shot. And I had to do that like two days of just feeling that like pain in the, in the stomach. And that was also another time that when they say, when they say said cut, I had to just cry. Um, it felt like it was just yeah, it was really difficult. So I, and it was embarrassing, um, but I just had to cry. Yeah. Laura and you met on Guiding Light, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you you had done scenes with her there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, she was good from day one. Day one. She could say, I don't know, like she could say, no, oh, I was green. No, <laughs> no, she was good. I remember playing Annie. I think she, her first couple of scenes where she was like a stripper or something. Right, um, Kathy was a stripper, yeah. And she, the confidence and the just raw talent, it, you can't buy that. You can't go to school and get that that's just something that you're born with you you just have it inside of you and and th thank god she stumbled on to acting because she was born to do this yeah yeah absolutely all right cynthia well you've had a full day of work we chatted i could chat with you for hours and hours How but i know you have to get i know <laughs> i know you have to return the wardrobe yeah they're like <laughs> or just like what <laughs> So this is something that Annie or Annie, that Annie. Annie <laughs> wearing. So a little wear. sneak peek. 
Uh, and your last thing would be, if you're say a few lines, look forward to what? Look forward to big, what, what are we, what's our little tease? Look forward to <laughs> big reveals and for Nina to finally get that thing that she's always wanted. Great. All right, Cynthia. It's always nice to talk. Always great to see you. All right. I'll, I'll see you again soon. I'll Bye. See you. Bye.